From the knowledge of the mechanism of SN1 reaction, one can expect that during any SN1 reaction, there should be 100% racemization for that particular reaction. If we start from a optically pure stereoisomer. However, here are some experimental facts which raises the questions that does complete racemization occur during SN1 reaction. So here is a compound, the plus enantiomer of this compound undergoing SN1 reaction giving 98% racem racemization and in another instance the plus enantiomer of this particular compound is giving 30% racemization during an SN1 reaction. Both these reactions are performed in the same solvent where water is acting as the active nucleophile giving rise to the corresponding alcohols. So we can clearly see that the degree of racemization is deviating from 100% to 98% and 34% respectively. In another example, the plus enantiomer of this compound is giving 98% racemization when a mixture of 80% acetone and 20% water is used as the solvent medium for the SN1 reaction or the solvolysis reaction but 80% racemization is observed when water alone is taken as the solvent so here also we can see that different solvent medium can also give rise to different degrees of racemization here also the racemization is not complete it is deviating from complete racemization that is the 100% racemization so what are the reasons behind these observations or experimental facts to understand that first we have to consider the traditional SN1 reaction mechanism we all know that the first step of this SN1 reaction is the rate determining step where the heterolytic cleavage of this carbon halogen bond takes place and the corresponding carbocation is generated. Now this carbocation contains a sp2 hybridized central carbon atom with a vacant pure weight. So any nucleophile in the reaction medium can attack from the top face of this plane to the to this upper lobe of the P or vital or the nucleophile can approach from the bottom face of the plane to attack this particular lobe of the P or vital. So when water molecule which is the nucleophile in our situation attacks from the top face this particular enantiomer is formed and when it is attacked from the bottom face this particular enantiomer is formed so from this mechanism one can expect that complete racemization should always take place for any SN1 reaction but it is not occurring in practical so what are the reasons so let us go deeper into the mechanism of SN1 reaction if we closely observe the dissociation of the alkyl halide and the formation of the carbocation and the Cl- counter anion and their solvation then one can observe these steps which are the first step is the dissociation of this carbon chlorine bond to give rise this ion pair so initially this ion pair will be surrounded by water molecules or the nucleophile or the solvent molecules present in the reaction medium. So there will be no solvent molecule between this carbocation and its corresponding counter anion. In our case the exact picture will look like this. This is our carbocation the planar sp2 hybridized carbon with a vacant p or vital having the Cl- in its right side and the left side is completely open for the water molecule so the water molecule cannot attack from this face 
because chlorine minus is there it will prevent the nucleophile however from the left side it can easily attack the p the lobe of this p orbital so in this situation inversion will take place if nucleophile, nucleophile attacks the p orbital however in the next step there will be accommodation of solvent molecules between the r plus and cl minus a layer of solvent molecules will eventually develop between this carbocation and this halide anion so in this situation attack from this side okay let us uh, have a look in our situation so this is the carbocation this is the chloride anion so in this situation attack from left side as well as attack from right side of this carbocation can take place because right now water molecule is surrounding this carbocation there is a water molecule layer between the carbocation and this chlorine minus so in this step if water molecule attacks the carbocation there is a probability of 100% racemization so in this step there will be always inversion in this step it will be 100% racemization and in the last step where the r plus and the cl minus are totally solvated by the solvent molecules and separated the attack from the solvent molecule towards the carbon carbocation center will eventually lead to 100% racemization since the attack can take place from the both side of the p orbital or the carbocationic plane so 100% racemization will be observed for this stage so the initial stage will generate the inversion the second stage will generate 100% racemization and the last stage will gives rise to 100% racemization so this is the step the first step is the crucial step in determining the extent of racemization so if the carbocation is highly stable then it will sustain or survive stage 1 and will proceed to the stage 2 in other words the stability of the carbocation will prevent from the nucleophilic attack at stage 1 so if there is less attack by the nucleophile at stage 1 then less inversion will take place during the reaction since stage 2 and stage 3 gives rise to racemization not any inversion so carbocationic stability is an important factor in determining the inversion during the sn1 reaction once again if this carbocation is highly stable then it will survive in stage 1 from the attack by the nucleophile and proceed to the stage 2 if the carbocation is unstable then it will it will find a reacting partner and will react to that and will produce a stable product but if this r plus is stable enough then it will sustain this stage 1 step and will proceed to the stage 2 and after stage 2 there is no inversion only racemization so the stage 1 is the crucial step during the sn1 reaction okay so the first factor is the stability of the carbocation another factor is the nucleophilicity of the solvent molecule here also the nucleophilicity of the solvent molecule will affect the stage 1 not the stage 2 and stage 3 because whatever the nucleophilic strength of the solvent molecule is here the carbocation is surrounded by the solvent molecule and here also it is surrounded by the solvent molecule so whether the solvent molecule is a strong nucleophile or weak nu- nucleophile it doesn't matter because it will attack from the both side but in the stage 1 again the survival of the carbocationic species 
will depend on the nucleophilicity of the solvent molecule. If the solvent molecule is a strong nucleophile, then it, then it will immediately attack the carbocation as soon as it is formed in the reaction medium and it will not let the carbocation to go to the stage 2 and that's why it will lead to higher degree of inversion and lesser degree of racemization. So nucleophilicity of the solvent molecule is also a significant role, uh, significant factor in determining the degree of racemization. So now we are going back to our examples, the experimental facts. In the first case, this molecule will give rise to this carbocation which is highly stable due to the presence of CAC group sorry this carbocation which is highly stable due to the presence of CAC group and the phenyl group phenyl group will provide plus R effect and the CAC group will provide plus I effect as well as the hyperconjugation effect so combine of both these effects will eventually stabilize the carbocation so since the carbocation is highly stable in this case the stage one in the stage one this carbocation will survive and it will go to the stage two so solvent molecule the attack by the solvent molecule at stage one will be very less due to the stability of this carbocation and the degree of racemization will be very high but in this case the carbocation is now very unstable since here only plus i effect and hyperconjugation effect are in action to stabilize the carbocation the methyl and cyclohexyl group can only provide plus i and hyperconjugation effect so its stability from the above carbocation is very less and due to its less stability this carbocation will immediately react with the nucleophile present at the reaction medium at stage one and that's why the degree of inversion will be very high in this particular molecule or in this particular reaction and hence we are getting very less racemization that is 34 percent racemization in the next example where the solvent molecule where the solvent is changed different solvents are used for the same substrate here the carbocation stabilization is constant for the different scenarios However, here the water molecule is present alone in the reaction medium but here the water molecule is diluted with 80% acetone. So in the stage 1, in the stage 1, the number of water molecule in this side will be high for pure water as a solvent the number of the number of water molecule at this position will be very high but in case of this diluted system the number of water molecule will be less in this position some water molecule will be there and most of the molecules will be acetone so the carbocation will be survived during the stage one step so that's why the percentage of racemization will be high when the diluted water medium is taken as a solvent medium since the carbocation is surviving for a longer period of time in the stage one and proceeding to the stage two but in case of pure water due to the presence of high number of water molecules adjacent to the carbocation this carbocation will 
undergo a nucleophilic attack from the water molecules and its reactivity at stage 1 will be thus very high and it will eventually react with the water molecule to give dry to gives rise to the inverted isomer and hence the degree of racemization is less in case of pure water as a solvent so that's it i hope you guys have uh, liked this discussion if you have any queries then you can ask me in the comment section and if you are new then please subscribe to my channel to get the latest latest videos and also don't miss to click the bell icon thank you for watching my videos see you in the next video